Hello, welcome to Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is lecture 25, Calculating Convexity. Okay, I did promise that we'd actually calculate convexity, but just before we do that, let's have a quick summary and recap of the previous lecture. Just come at it from a slightly different angle, just in case you didn't quite get that non-mathematical explanation in the previous lecture. Let's draw a typical graph. It's not quite typical, but it's familiar, hopefully, anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to have interest rates down here. We're going to have bond prices here. Now, for any cycling fans out there, hopefully this will seem familiar as well. We're going to go from 0%. We're going to add on 1%. That's going to be what we're going to add on every time, 1%. And what we'll do is we'll go to 1% from 0%. And then we'll go from 1% to 2%. Then we'll go to 3%. And rather strangely, we'll have this little gap here. And we'll go from infinity percent to infinity plus one percent and hopefully this will make sense once we get going when we go from zero to one percent with a one percent increase of interest rates that's an infinite slope so zero to one is an infinite increase i'll put an infinite slope in there when we add on one percent and we go from one percent to two percent that's a 100% increase in the, the kind of interest rate. So what I'll do is I'll draw a 100% slope. Imagine Bradley Wiggins or Chris Froome going up a hill like that in the Pyrenees. When we go from 2% to 3% using the 1% increase, that's going to be a 50% increase in the slope. And finally, when we go from infinity to infinity plus 1%, that's actually a 0% rise, because infinity plus 1 is infinity. So that gives us a 0% slope. If you put those four slopes together and everything intervening between them, we get the convexity curve. Anyway, that's just another attempt to try to explain convexity. Go to the previous lecture for a longer explanation. OK, moving to Excel. Let's just bring up the Excel here. Hopefully most of this is already familiar, the things like the yield to maturity, coupon rate, bond maturity, face value, the price. We'll put all these Excel functions up later, by the way, but it's going to be a bit messy now if we do it now. So we will put all these things up again later. Then we've got modified duration. We've got the three cash flows here for this three-year bond. By the way, all the formulas that we're going to see here are only going to work for annual bonds. If you want to apply them to semi-annual or quarterly bonds, which pay every six months or every three months, what you're going to have to do for homework, and you know I love giving out homework, is you're going to have to halve all the yields to maturities, so that would be 4%, and you're going to have to double all the bond maturities to number of periods being six if it's semi-annual, and the same for every other formula I'm going to use. But again, I'll let you work all that out for homework. OK, so just as a recap, let's work out the present values of this $9 in one year's time and the $9 in two years time and $109 in three years time, just as a recap from previous lectures. So this is going to equal this is going to equal the actual cash flow. And then that's going to be divided by the power of one plus the yield to maturity. And that's going to be raised to the power of the period, raised to the power of one. And that gives us a present value of $9 in one year's time. It's actually worth $8.33 today. Let's just copy that formula down then. Let's just copy that down to there. And we'll get rid of all these unnecessary zeros very shortly too. OK, now this one we haven't seen before. So let's take some time over this. This is a similar formula to the present value one, only it's going to be the kind of second derivative. We're going to see some squaring and things going on in here. We're going to add up all these convex elements and we'll also come to a sum down here as well. Before I do that, let's sum up these columns here. So this is going to be equal to the sum of all of these things here. And that's 102.58. And as you can see, that's the same as the price using the built-in Excel PV command that you can see there. So we got the price right there. Anyway, let's add up these convex elements to get a full convexity figure. So hold on to your horses here. This is going to be equal to brackets one divided by brackets, the power brackets of one plus the yield to maturity. And then that's going to be squared. And that's going to be 
three brackets that's going to be multiplied by brackets f2 which is this thing here which is the present value of the cash flow and then that's going to be multiplied by again another bracket the power bracket of d2 which is the period and then that's going to be squared and then we're going to add on the period which in this case happens to be one and then let's just finish off those brackets hopefully that's enough brackets and we've got the convex element i will comment this cell later when we are done anyway copy all these convex elements down again we'll deal with these zeros in a second sum all of those elements just drag this formula across it's a sum as well and now we can work out a manual way of working out convexity now let's just deal with these pesky zeros here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that for all of these cells here let's do some conditional formatting and we'll go to conditional formatting we'll put some highlight cells rules equal to if any of those cells are equal to zero then what we're going to do is we're going to have a custom format and i'm going to make the text the same color as the background so i'm going to use this lovely nice green color here and that's cleared all of the zeros now this is great because what it means is i can now do four year bonds and get the convexity figure oh i haven't actually quite got that yet we'll do that in a second or even up to eight years which is great with my special grid here now how do i actually work out the convexity figure well this is going to be equal to the sum of the convex elements divided by the sum of the pvs or the present values which is of course the price and then that gives us the convexity figure we will comment these cells later if you want to do that now here's an unfortunate thing i can't put nine years in here because my grid is only eight big let's go back to my three-year bond i can go up to eight years but no more than that with this grid so let's use the built-in excel convexity function as we've got the built-in excel price function here unfortunately i'm not aware that there is a built-in excel convexity function so we're going to have to write our own if we want to go beyond eight years and we want to do this neatly in the future how are we going to do that well we're going to have to do some vba now i'm not going to go into the code here i will provide a link in the youtube show notes to a blog post and in the blog post i will put all of the code so you won't have to type all of this stuff but what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to press alt f11 and we're going to have to bring up the development environment in the background and we're going to have to insert our own excel function now, i'm not going to type everything out i do have the code cunningly saved away here i'm going to copy all of this and again just look in the youtube show notes there'll be a link to a blog post and in the blog post there will be all of this code so just copy all of that go back to the thing here put the function in there save that this is going to be called it's very very small uh, you need good eyes to read this uh, and these annual convexity now do remember this is only going to work for annual paying bonds if you want to do this with semi-annual bonds and quarterly paying bonds you're going to have to rewrite this code yourself you're going to have to basically for a semi-annual bond halve the yield to maturity and double the number of periods except for that it should all work out or you can just go to the wikipedia bond convexity page and work out all of the calculations for yourself from scratch so good luck with that okay so having saved this we can now use this function in the main excel page so let's just try it out then this is going to be equal to andy's annual convexity and all we need to put in here is the yield to maturity the coupon rate the bond maturity remember this only works for annual paying bonds and the face value and that gives us the vba version of convexity which is absolutely fantastic and later on in the next lecture We'll see that we'll be able to put any period we like in here. We could put 50 years in here, 60 years in here, 25 years in here, or whatever. But that will be in the next lecture, where we're actually going to apply convexity and use it to predict future bond prices when interest rates change. Okay, so does everything work? Yes, it all seems to. Let's go up to eight years, which is what we're limited to on this grid, and we get a convexity function. Again, in the next lecture, we'll actually be applying this convexity value to changing and predicting bond price changes. Anyhow, what I better do is I better comment all of these relevant fields for you so that you can play with this stuff yourself later. So let's just finish off and do that now.
So let's do them all while we're here. Um, we just can't quite see that one. So let's just put that there. And we'll come with that one too. Let's put that down. Let's try and see this text. Now these are the important ones here. I think this is quite a long one, this one. So here we go for that one. The PV1. Let's just drag that down. You're going to have to figure the rule out yourself, I'm afraid. This is a bit more complicated than the PV1. Let's just drag it over there. Let's put these two. These are both sums. So hopefully they're quite straightforward. And then we've got the way of working out manually the convexity. And then this one is the special VBA function that I wrote. And again, go to the YouTube show notes, go to a blog post link from there, and you should be able to find code for working out your own VBA convexity function. Okay, see you next time.